851, turn right, heading 180. Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established 270. How did the Airbus A380 change the aviation industry? Is it because it's a double decker, it has four engines, it has quite the capacity? Or is it because it's the world's largest passenger plane? Hello everyone, and I'd like to welcome you back, or to DJ's Aviation, the channel where I cover everything in the aviation industry. If you're new, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Since its release more than a decade ago, the A380 has received mixed reactions. It's been appreciated, but also hated. It's an aircraft which has been labelled by some as the 747 killer, but it has successfully transported millions upon millions of passengers, and has become a trustworthy aircraft in many airlines' fleet. The Airbus A380 changed aviation greatly. The A380 meant that the double-decker was born, a full double-decker, and it immediately became a sight, with people flocking to viewing areas to welcome it to their home airport. I do remember that I was one of those people at the age of 8 when the Qantas A380 prototype visited Australia for the first time. There were hundreds of people in the viewing areas to see the giant. It was something that the industry hadn't seen before, and was a welcome change. The Airbus A380 came at a time when four-engine jets, you could argue, were starting to disappear. Boeing were launching their 7478, but at the time, it hadn't really performed as expected. And both Airbus and Boeing were changing their pathways and were releasing efficient twin-engine wide-body jets, which were perfect for many aircraft needs over the 747 or the A380. However, the A380 had two decks and four engines. Seeming the 747 was such a success with its looks, the A380 became an aircraft which could be identified at any airport. This was down to the sheer size of it. But the A380 didn't just change aviation with its looks, it changed it with space, something I'll move on to now. The A380 is the world's largest passenger plane currently flying, and it offers customers a bucket load of space, more than what is found on other aircraft. There are many benefits to the added space, however you could argue for a plane like the A380, the added space is best for seat developments. After all, the A380 was certainly not built for, let's say, an ultra-low-cost carrier to cram 1,000 people into an all-economy cabin. When taking a look at the airlines operating it, they could most definitely be classed as premium airlines. While Airbus battled to receive new orders, the existing customers battled it out to create better cabins and seats that would entice existing customers and new customers to choose them on selected routes over other airlines. In recent years alone, we've seen the introduction of apartments, showers, lounges, and many, many more add-ons, which are not featured on, say, smaller aircraft like your A330 or even 757. While the 747 suddenly pioneered luxurious travel, at a point in time on the 747, luxury did have to be toned down, and this is due to the increased costs. Results in airlines struggling and understanding that applying a luxurious element to the entire cabin simply wasn't possible. However, on the A380, at least in select areas, it is feasible for these airlines to launch apartments with couches, flat beds, flat screen TVs, butlers, and more. They price these seats in the tens of thousands for, let's say, an eight-hour journey, and people do buy them. This goes straight into the airline's pocket and allows them to keep up with the service. The difference is that instead of an all-economy club with seats selling at, let's say, $800 a pop, they can offer a higher-class product for, yep, $30,000. The return is exceptional despite the cost to actually maintain that said product. In fact, a year doesn't go by where some airlines won't upgrade their product found on the A380. It's a constant competition between cabin designers to create the next big thing, which in turn entices customers on board. It'd be wrong of me not to mention the capacity found on board the A380. The A380, as you know, is a double-decker. It can carry a lot of people. This is a huge benefit to airlines who need that capacity on certain routes. High-performing airlines like Emirates, who operate long-haul travel to the United States from their hub in Dubai, utilize the A380's added capacity to transport more people on every flight. However, they do configure their aircraft also to maximize luxury, with onboard showers and more. Ultimately, though, the A380 has allowed these airlines to fly into congested airports where slots are limited or very expensive. They will then have that extra capacity so they can transport more people than, say, on a 777 or even an A350. The A380 changed airports in the aviation industry as well, and this is purely down to the sheer size of the aircraft. 
According to the chairman of Frankfurt Airport, all the way back in 2006, the A380 would spark a new generation of wide-body aircraft, and when discussing the routes that the A380 was actually planned to fly on, he said to cut costs, the members of the top three alliances will redirect the bulk of their long-haul transfer traffic into a handful of mega hubs, sidelining many of today's secondary hubs. The trend will be accelerated by open skies, deregulation, mergers, and the introduction of mega planes, such as the A380, which only the largest hubs with significant feeder capacity will be equipped to handle. Interesting interestingly enough, in this quote he said and the introduction of mega planes such as the A380. However, we haven't really seen anything to the size of the A380. Sure, there's the 7478, maybe you could say the Beluga or the Dreamlifter, but the Beluga and Dreamlifter serve a different purpose, transporting cargo, whereas we just have the 7478, which was releasing at the same time. And it just shows that back in the day, this was what people believed would be the future. However, we've seen aircraft like the 787, A350, A330 Neo, 777X, even just the 777, come through and be more efficient than a four-engine jet. Frankfurt, along with many other airports, had to adjust their facilities to cope with the Airbus A380. For instance, inside the terminal, sky bridges and boarding zones were also adjusted. This would allow passengers to smoothly disembark and board their A380 flights. Other airports had to change their taxiways to enable the giant to actually fit. While over in Hawaii, Honolulu is actually preparing for their first all-Nippon Airways A380 service by improving their gates and facilities. This is a costly process, and as the chairman of Frankfurt Airport said back in 2006, it would only apply to major airports. However, we've quickly seen this change with airlines like Emirates expanding their A380 network to well over 100 units in their fleet. Because their growth is at such a rapid rate, no longer is it just major international airports welcoming the world's largest passenger plane. In addition, the A380 has limited access to some airports across the globe. Take Melbourne Airport for example. While the airport welcomes the A380 in daily from multiple airlines, its international terminal cannot take, say, 10 A380s. Only a certain amount of gates can fit the aircraft, making scheduling sometimes rather problematic, and this is should the airport not expand in the future. When comparing Melbourne to Dubai, they are quite the opposite, with the airport gates in Dubai being able to handle the A380 as far as the eye can see. That's also got a lot to do with the airline that is basing its operations in Dubai, Emirates, as I mentioned, they have over 100 in their fleet and a whole lot more to come. It's not just gates or inside the airport terminal that were actually impacted by the arrival of the Airbus A380. Maintenance facilities were also changed because of its arrival. For instance, sticking with Frankfurt Airport as our example, Lufthansa also invested around 150 million euros into a facility which would be able to handle the A380. Many airlines that hadn't operated an aircraft as large as the four-engine A380 had to adjust their hangars in order to accommodate the aircraft. To this day, some airlines have their larger jobs completed overseas at hangars made for the aircraft. While this can be labelled as not ideal, it is a good option for airlines that simply don't want to invest, say hundreds of millions, into their own facilities. An example is Qantas, who have a deal with Emirates and Dubai Airport, and got their A380s painted over in Dubai. No surprise there, as this is where the Emirates A380s are based, and there is a lot of facilities to handle the Airbus A380 while they also undergo major maintenance checks up in Asia. The A380 changed how many people moved from point A to point B, and while having its complications or not being a commercial success, according to some, it certainly brings a smile to many people's faces when they see the four-engine jet parked up at the airport or just flying in the sky. Because just like the Boeing 747 many, many decades ago, and really still to this day, the A380 manages to catch the eye of many and be identified as the flying whale, or just generally the world's largest passenger plane. What are your thoughts on the Airbus A380? I'm aware some of you watching this are definitely going to be pro Boeing and can't stand the aircraft, but maybe you've had a good experience on the aircraft. Maybe you really like delivery. Let me know in the comments section below, and as you heard me say earlier, if you've had a good experience, let me know. I'd say mine was most definitely when I flew on the Qantas A380 in 2016. I have done a podcast on my experience on board the 
Airbus A380. That can be found on my SoundCloud. Link will be in the description. Definitely go and check that out. It's around 30 minutes of detailing how I found the A380. And I have to say, it was really, really good. I'd like to thank you very much for tuning into this video on how the Airbus A380 changed the aviation industry. If you did enjoy it, feel free to drop a like, and as I mentioned at the start, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I do very much look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly